Paige O'Mardian and you're watching Coffee with Paige. So grab your coffee or tea or whatever you want to drink and settle in because I want to introduce you to our guest for today, Laura Landon. Hey. Laura, thanks so much for coming over and hanging out. Yeah, of course. Well, Laura and I met through the label that we used mm -hmm. to be with. Um, when we were doing music, uh, we were on the same label, Whiplash Records, and I met Laura because you were working with my husband's father, Michael yes. Mardian. Another connection, yes. <laughs> that was my first album, which was amazing. That's um, awesome. Experience, opportunity to get to do it, and that's how we met. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so I, you know, as I was thinking of just who to have, you know, over for coffee and yeah. <laughs> do this with. I thought of you because I love your heart. And even though we haven't gotten to hang out much in the past, you know, mm -hmm. year or whatnot, but I, I just love just your heart of what you're doing. And, and I've always been curious to know more about Laura Landon and yeah. what has made you who you are. And so I'd love to just start with some of your story and, okay. and just, you know, what was life like growing up for you? Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, I grew up in a Christian family. My mom and dad are both believers. And so I grew up, you know, going to church and hearing the Bible stories and in a very um, safe, nurturing environment. I have two older sisters and my dad is just a real family man. Mm -hmm. And my mom is just, you know, gave everything she had to us and homeschooled us. Like, you know, the whole nine yards, mm -hmm. like a very idyllic childhood. Um but when I started getting into my teens and when I started going to school, it was like a rude awakening for me. And, um, you know, I was just faced with, with the harsh realities that, like, you know, not everyone is on your side and, like, people can mm -hmm. talk bad about you and criticize you. And it was just so foreign to me. Mm -hmm. um, and at that vulnerable age when everyone's questioning their identity anyway, um, you know, you're you're trying to figure out who you are and... And you start asking questions and you start, you know, trying to find your worth and validation mm -hmm. through your friends and through the opposite sex. And so I was like, I went into a real kind of spiral into depression and um, depression also runs in my family. Mm -hmm. And so it was just, it was teen years, which is hard for everyone, I'm sure. But then on top of it, like I was just so sensitive and I was so depressed mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I went down the wrong path. I I just made some really bad choices and it led me into a lot of shame, a lot of despair, a lot of feeling like, you know, how did my life go from picture perfect childhood, mm -hmm. great parents to feeling ashamed, feeling depressed and feeling hopeless. And um so that's at that point I I stopped going to high school. And I um, started going to community college and I started taking music classes and recording classes and writing songs um, to just get these feelings off my chest. Because mm -hmm. even though I was a little bit wayward and making some wrong choices, I was going to God with my questions and my hurts and um, writing about it. I remember writing my journal every single day and then like summing up everything I just wrote about in a song or a poem. Mm -hmm. And so it's like God was training me to write songs and training me how to process through my feelings and to come to Him um, every day through songs. That's cool. That's yeah. Really so that was the way that like I started building my relationship with God was through songwriting. Mm -hmm. And I still do that even to this day. You know, it's through songs and through, that they're like my prayers. I see God in you. Well, so did you always love singing or was that just yeah. you know, something that you developed later on? Or? Yeah, you know, some people discover it later in life. I discovered it in a really funny way. Um, I was I was always a tag along of my older sisters. And so my older sister, you know, thought that she could sing really well and she wanted to go audition for Annie, the musical. And I was tagging along as usual. And um, they were like, oh, just let her sing. You know, she's here anyway. <laughs> out comes like the sun will come out you know and I had this big voice and I got the part of Annie and my <laughs> sister was like very disgruntled oh no that's <laughs> so funny because I was only nine oh, and gosh. um so that's when I discovered I could sing and then it was like oh. you know all the attention like shoo, 
shifted toward me and my voice wow. and like we got to get her in singing lessons we got to get her in piano lessons we got to wow. you know so that's how I discovered it and that's then I so funny. ever since then, it's like yeah. what a funny story of yeah. your sister saying oh just let her sing and then <laughs> like oops sorry a bit soon. <laughs> yeah. oh that's yeah. so neat well when did you start writing songs and was it in so it was the in midst my te- of it your... was in my teens it okay. was during like the the hard times of my teens mm-hmm. but I'm so glad you know God uses everything yeah. even things that we think are unredeemable or we so you know like depression or feeling so out on the outs Mm. he uses it and now you know those those songs where I've expressed that speaks to people in a really real way and specifically like the song beloved I got that revelation when I was in my teens I remember uh, a defining moment in my life was when I was sitting in my my bedroom just you know crying out to God and he put his arms around me very tangibly Mm. and um I got that word beloved beloved Wow. And um, it really, if you break the word down, it's be loved, mm. be loved. And so that's one of my life messages is just to tell people like, be loved. I know it's hard to accept God's love. I know it's, you hear about it ever since you're little with Jesus loves mm-hmm. me, but it's our life's journey and it's our calling to be loved. Mm. Well, was that really the first moment that you feel like you accepted God's love? I think it was. I think that was. You know, I'd always known God, and I had dialogue with God, and I'd read the Bible. I grew up in church. But I think in that moment, it became very real to me. Mm -hmm. Very real, too. And, you know, since then, I've had my doubts. I mean, when I went to college, I was questioning more and questioning everything. but, But I knew in that moment something changed and that God was real. Mm -hmm. And I would never be able to deny that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, and what did that do from you from, or, you know, in your heart from there, just being able to finally understand and accept God's love and to know you're His beloved? Like, what did that do for your journey with Him and for your, you know, really uh, finding your calling? What was that journey like from that point? Well, that's a good question. I think that it gave me a sense of self respect and it gave me a sense of worth where, I said, I'm intrinsically worth something if God loves me. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm here for a reason. I'm not going to think about ever killing myself. I'm never going to think about wasting my life. I'm never going to, you know, I don't have to make poor choices because I'm worth more. So the sense of being loved gave me the courage to expect more of myself and to value myself more. And so, like, you know, you have to value yourself to think, oh, I'm going to move to Nashville to be a Christian mm-hmm. singer. Because I have something to say, and God gave me a gift, and you know I'm I'm worthy of doing that through mm-hmm. God, that's not cool. on my own, but God thinks I'm worthy, so I'm worthy, and so that's the message I want to give people. It's like you have to love yourself, you have to have the courage to think you're worth something, because if you don't think you're worth something, you know nobody's ever going to be able to fill that void. That's true. No person, no relationship. And, and you won't be able to do great things with your life, you know, because you don't, you don't think you're worth it. That's true. So it changed my life dramatically. Hmm. It really did. Well, and so what was the process for you with, you know, you said moving to Nashville. You grew up in California, right? Mm-hmm. So moving to Nashville, yeah. how was that? And, and God kind of, you know, pushing you out of your comfort zone and into your calling. Yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> I know. (laughs) Like most uh, good things, you know, they say all the best things are really difficult things. Yes. Um, So it was hard leaving my family and um, leaving the California climate to come to Nashville (laughs) where it was like snowing Um, and just not knowing anyone. And the music business, as you know, is very like you put your heart out there. It's hard. And it gets like just, you know, eh, we don't really care. You know, like we don't really care. There's a million great singers. There's a million talented yep. people. Um, but I think like that sense of a worth, a God given worth, not a people given worth. It's like, yeah, everyone's good, but God gave me something to say. And God gave me a voice for mm-hmm. my own journey. That's good. So, um, when I got here, I was very intimidated because I, you know, I had a great voice from a small town, but could I, could I stick it in Nashville? Yes. And, um, so it, it was good though, because God uses music to like refine my own character. 
you know, not just to get a good product for me mm. as far as music goes, but he uses it as a tool to like mold me and refine me and That's cool. keep saying, look to me, look to me, look to me. Like they're not going to validate mm. you. They're not going to give you a big break. You know, I'm the one who's going to give you everything you need. Mm. So it's been a journey. I'm not there yet, but I'm, <laughs> I'm closer as one of my songs says. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I love how God does that in, you know, in what he calls us to do. He always uses that to refine us mm-hmm. and to make us depend on him. And mm-hmm. I found that in my own life with things he's called me to that I feel inadequate for. Yeah. I'm like, Lord, why are you calling me to do this? There's so many yeah. other people. Uh, but yes, it's exactly what you said. Well, because you have a place here because God's given you something right. specific yeah. that no one else has. Mm-hmm. Well, so... So you you put out your first album, and mm-hmm. then you put out another one recently. Yeah, well, I, I put out that first one, and that's how we met. Yeah. Um, that was a few years ago. Since then, I've been, I, I've put out, like, you know, a few, uh, an EP, a Christmas album, another full-length album, and now I'm working on a new one. Um, so, wow, tell me about that one. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's called Free, and um, I think that really just encapsulates everything that I'm going for and what God's showing me in life and, and getting new levels of freedom, mm-hmm. like, you know, just freedom from the smallest things, like the, the negative self-talk, the, the weird things I do that I think I'm supposed to do because it's the Christian thing to do, mm-hmm. or it's what people expect. And it's like just, and new levels of just being free. And it comes out in the sound of the music. Like I'm really just having fun, wow. like, there's more upbeat songs. There's more soulful songs. Um, and it, and through the lyrics and music, it's just really showing that whole new freedom. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, and so you're working on building the funds for this one right now, right? Well, I just did a Kickstarter okay. to fundraise for it. And so I got the funding. That was a Yay, God thing. That's awesome. And so now I'm just, you know, whittling down the songs that I want and... Um, you know, trying to figure out who I'm going to work with and how I'm going to get it done. So it's, it's almost there, you know, it's, it's happening now. So I'm excited Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm excited because it was, um, funded through fans and, and friends and they're really involved in the process, you know, and I know I'm hearing from them and I'm hearing what they, what they need and what they're going through and I'm able to incorporate that in, mm. while I'm making it. Mm. Well, so with this whole message of freedom and free, what is it that, you know, is kind of the core of it or or that you really hope is um, expressed through this album as it releases and, you know, gets to be uh, in the listeners' ears and hearts? Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is, like, I think freedom comes from understanding love and grace because freedom without God's love and grace is is not real freedom. It's a false freedom. And I'm not talking about just, you know, having the license to go do whatever you want and act like whatever you want and, you know, no rules, no boundaries. No, I'm not saying that kind of freedom. I'm saying the freedom that comes from knowing you're loved and knowing who you are and knowing God's grace can cover you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to walk on eggshells and you can be honest with yourself and others and um, God's grace and love is going to cover you and catch you. And so that allows you to be yourself and that allows you to be free. Mm. So that's grace amazing. and love and freedom. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am so excited to hear this new yeah. album. And okay, so tell me just in a nutshell, just for those who haven't heard your music, what kind of the, I know it's hard to pinpoint, yeah, what yeah. does it sound like? Well, you just have yeah. to listen, but how would you describe your okay. sound? Well, I play the piano and um, I'm really soulful. I think I'm more like a soul singer, like... Um, you are. I you have an awesome <laughs> belt awesome to get out. Voice. You know, um, I love just like really giving all my emotions. Um, but people have said it sounds like a Sarah McLaughlin type thing because I'm playing the piano mm-hmm. and it can be a little ethereal at times. So I'd say like a soulful Sarah McLaughlin esque mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. <laughs> is what it sounds like. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited to hear your new project. Thank you. And I'm just so excited to, to get to talk with you and, and you. have you share your story and mm-hmm. just what God's been doing in your life and yeah. this new album, which I can't wait for. Thank you. So, well, if you want to find out more about Laura Landon, you can go to her website at, what is it? It's just lauralandon.com and it's L-A-R-A Landon, L-A-R-A. Awesome. 
laurelandon.com. Well, thank you so much for joining us and hanging out. And we will see you next Tuesday on the next Coffee with Paige.